Hello everybody and welcome to VFR today. You join us on the flight line at KAPA Centennial Airport just south of Denver, Colorado. One of the busiest general aviation airports in the United States. It's a windy, windy day and today we're going to be doing a quick check ride, I like to call it, in the Just Flight Piper Aero, the Turbo Aero 4. November 616 Victor Foxtrot, freshly out of the paint shop. Uh, we're going to basically go through all the steps that I go through to relearn an airplane and get ready to get to a point where I could safely fly VFR on a network like VATSIM. So we'll go through where all the buttons are and um, just do a little bit of practice uh, up a little bit west of the airport and uh, come back to land. So this will be a good refresher if you haven't flown the Arrow in a while or if you're new to Flight Sim or to the Piper Arrows, the Turbo Arrow, this will be a good resource hopefully for you too. Um, but again, this is very much what I kind of do when I'm trying to relearn an airplane. So starting with the walk around, uh, a few things. The chocks and tie downs are all controlled by the EFB. Those are things that stop us from going anywhere. Uh, the tow bar helps us push back if we need to, but again, these are all kind of aesthetic. We just want to make sure that this goes away before we take off. Um, also, I've got all the doors opened up, so we have our main door, our baggage door, and the oil door up here on top of the nose. So those are the, th the doors you can open for this airplane. And um, again, we want all that closed and locked before, um, before we get too far. Now, um, one thing to check and just kind of visualize for ourselves are lights. So if we come in here and just turn on our battery for now, make sure things come to life. Go ahead and turn on our anti-collision lights and our landing lights. So you can see our landing lights here on the nose, and that'll give us a nice a beam. Lights are very simple in this plane. Um, and then we'll just make sure that we have lights on the sides too. So we have one light. Two lights all working. Now in the real world, you're checking really to make sure that the lights are on and they haven't burnt out. Sim, they're not going to burn out. But it, it is helpful to know where the lights are, just uh, just so you're familiar with the airplane. Um, again, we would walk around the whole airplane and make sure that there was no damage or anything. And um, just make sure everything's in tip-top shape. One thing we can do while we're on the outside here, though, that is sim-related, is do a quick control check. Just make sure your controls are responding. Um, I, you know, I fly... I have a setup that I can take up and put down. So, um, when I'm not using it on my desk, it's not there. So, just making sure everything is plugged in is a good first self-check for you. Now, I am going to be following basically just the Turbo Aero manual that comes with it from Just Flight. We're in the Turbo Aero 4 today, but this all really applies to the, the 3 as well. And again, we're going to be following normal procedures. So, cockpit pre-flight. We have landing gear down. Uh, landing gear lever is here. And uh, we tell that it's down by these three green lights. With these three green lights are down, we have good light. We have good, um, our gear is down. Parking brake is set. Um, that's this lever, and it's pulled out to be set. Avionics are off. Now, if your avionics probably won't be off, but you just turn this knob on the GPS. Uh, we're using the GNS 530 configuration. There are several configurations. This is the GTN 750. Uh, the GPS 100, the old school GPS, you have a dual GPS, um, GNS dual system. We're using the 530 and the um, older NAV2. We'll turn all this off for now while we're setting it up. Um, the other interesting thing about the Turbo Arrow and the all the Just Flight Arrows that you can buy is you have this option state saving, which is really cool. So basically, if I leave the airplane a mess last time I shut it down, it will reboot as a mess when I uh, when I get back into it. So it just helps you. It gives you something else to look out for. So this is basically when we got in, cold and dark, how I left it last time I flew it. So avionics are off. If they're on, nothing will blow up. Um, controls down here, we have throttle. We have RPM, propeller RPM control, and mixture. So those are our three controls. All that should be cut off for now. Magnetos down here are off the key. And um, our battery master, we've turned it on, turn it off, make sure things turn off. And uh, we're all good there. We checked our flight controls, but just make sure that everything is working. All your controls are set up right. And then um, flaps are going to be this lever down here. So I highly recommend you bind that to something. Um, we're not going to operate them yet, but we'll, we will use flaps on takeoff. 
And then we're making sure everything else is closed. The last thing to check is trim neutral. That's this, um, this here. We are about to end. We can actually bring it back up. Again, that's that small deviation was because it was flying it earlier. Now, the manual goes through some visual checks for damage of the wings. We're not really going to bother with that. I'm hoping they're okay or the magic of sim will fix it. Uh, but if you do want to close the cabin door the real way, because you can um, open it up, you just click there and make sure everything is latched. All right, so we are getting on to engine start now. Um, we have a cold engine which means that um, we're going to follow the cold engine procedures. It's not much different, but it is a little bit different. Now, most planes start the same way, especially small propeller airplanes. Uh, really, you need a little bit of throttle, most of your levers forward, and then you're turning on the power. So you're, you have to make sure that you have fuel, that you have some throttle giving the fuel to the airplane, and that all of your mixture and RPM is all good and your electrics are all on and you have magnetos. And so every plane's a little bit different, but broadly speaking, you need fuel, you need a spark to start an engine. Now here, we're gonna get that spark through the magnetos. Um, we want the throttle open to half inch. Our alternator switch can come on. Now I might have to move my prop lever back to get at that, but they want alternator switch on, battery master switch is on. Uh, fuel pump, we can throw it into low now, or we can use the prime button so we can bring the mixture full rich and hold this down for three seconds until we see the, the, the smaller needle here jump around a little bit and make sure we have fuel pressure, actually. So that's good. Mixture can go to rich and then idle cutoff. Now we want to make sure our propeller is clear. No one's around us. There are no people in this world right now, but... Um, We'll just make sure you could yell clear prop out the window. And then we're engaging the, so then prop forward, throttle open a quarter inch, and we're going to engage the starter. We'll give it just a little bit now. So we'll bring the throttle back. Mixture goes full rich after we engage. Just bringing that up until we catch. And then we're gonna try and idle at about 1400, 1500 RPM. So engine controls, your engine, all your engine gauges are basically down here. You have your RPM in hundreds. So 500, 500 10 hundreds or a thousand, 15 hundreds or a thousand, 15 or 1500 and 2000 up here. So we're gonna keep it kind of just below 15, 1500. And then down here, you have fuel flow along the bottom, and you have manifold pressure up at the top. If you're feeling the DC-6, same idea. So we will be setting manifold pressure as an indication of how much power we're, we're, the engine's putting out. So magnetos to both throttle is now, we'll bring it, um, we'll just adjust it so that we're at about 1400, 1500 RPM. And that's about it. So. We can get our avionics set up now, so turn that on. We can squawk VFR, and we'll just go ahead and turn the squawk on. Make sure our radios are on, our nav radio on. And everything else is just about good. So now, if you haven't flown the arrow, basically your six pack is out here in front of you. you got steam gauges, um, your attitude indicator, your airspeed indicator, your altimeter. We are um, 30, I think 3007, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, 3007, so we'll just make sure that, that is 3007, something like that. And then you have a compass up here, and you have some other instruments that we will get into in a little bit. Um, the other things that we are looking at, make sure you have fuel in your tanks. Now, I filled it up for the last flight I did. It saved that for me now, so I have just about full tanks. The left tank is just a little bit fuller, so we'll try and run off the left tank for now. All right, we are about ready to taxi. So finally, talking through it like we're on VATSIM, we will assume this would be an uncontrolled airport. Of course, uh, KAPA is controlled. It has a control tower, but uh, you, if Denver Center or approach isn't controlling it, 
or they're not online. We treat it as uncontrolled. So we'll treat it as uncontrolled for now. Uh, now the weather is going to be somewhat important here as we figure out where exactly to go. Uh, METAR is at this moment in the real world, and we have live weather on showing uh, winds of 010, 21 knots, gusting to 35. So it is pretty windy. And it will be a little bit bumpy, but uh, we'll be able to handle it. We do have at KAPA a couple of good runways that we can use if we go over here. This is the METAR. What we really want, though, is the airport diagram. So we have a north south runway, 17 left, and 35 right is the long one. We'll use the long one because it's going to be convenient. And then um, we'll pick 35 right because 010 will give us a good headwind for that, even if it is a pretty stiff wind. So not a huge crosswind, despite the big stiff wind. All right, and then, yeah, we're at APA, so uncontrolled ops. We'll just practice that for now. We are, we are I believe the call sign Centennial. So Centennial traffic, arrow, 616 Victor Foxtrot, taxiing runway 35 right via Alpha. Centennial traffic. So we're going to, via Alpha which is the long taxiway just alongside that. Pretty simple here. All right, so parking brake can come off. We'll throttle up just a little bit. We can close our window. Make it a little bit quieter in here for us. And Alpha is just going to be the... We'll make a right-hand turn here and then go to Alpha. So on our taxi rule, we're nice and established on Alpha. So let's talk a little bit about what we're going to be doing today. We're going to brief our flight. We're going to take off heading to the north, 3-5 right. We're going to then turn west, make a left-hand turn, and head out to a little practice area out over the south side of Denver. Uh, we will be at about 8,000 feet at that point. We'll climb up to 8,000 feet. Uh, we are underneath the Denver Class Bravo shelf. We'll keep it that way throughout the flight. If you're interested, look it up on Sky Vector. But um, we're going to head out to the west and just basically work through some turns, make sure we remember how to use the autopilot, and make sure we know how to ascend and descend. Pretty simple stuff. Now, this is also always an opportunity to practice takeoffs and landings and everything else that's involved in flying a plane like this. So just going through all this, knocking off some of the rust in a quick, not a long flight that's going to take us under an hour total in real time. So... That's really what helps me learn these airplanes a little bit better. And even in big jetliners, it's the same principle. And one last thing, lest I forget, we are at a freeware scenery, a really nice freeware scenery, done by Automator. This is KAPA Centennial Airport. I will link in the description below. But it is my go-to for um, this plus Colorado Ranchers Pack scenery pack. They have a bunch of smaller airports around Colorado. This is really my go-to general aviation practice area. I think it's really neat. You have a Class Bravo, big international airport, as well as a bunch of small fields that you can fly around. You have Flatland, you have the Great Plains, and the Rocky Mountains here along the Front Range. So it's a good, it's a good one. You should check it out. All right, so we're getting close to the end of the runway here, 35 right. We're going to pull off here, turn into the wind, and do some ground checks real quick, uh, just because it's kind of fun, and um, it's good to get into the habit of doing it. It's not too terribly difficult. So we will just swivel on around more or less into the wind. And that's what this area is here for, this and holding while you're waiting to depart or something like that. All right, so we will swing it around. Bring the throttle back a little bit. And now we're ready to go. So, ground check. Again, just from the Turbo Aero handbook, we want to set our parking brake. Parking brake set. Um, prop RP, propellers full forward. We've got mixture full rich. And then we're going to try and set 2,000 RPM with the throttle. So we want the RPM gauge to read 20. And we'll just be a little patient. It doesn't have to be exact. Let's bring it back a smidge. It doesn't have to be exact. So next we're going to check our magnetos just to make sure both magnetos work. Those are the things providing the sparks for the engine. So we're at 2100 RPM, that's fine. We can bring it back to the left and just make sure we're observing a drop, but we still have engine power. The manual calls out a max drop of 175 RPM, ideally. So that's looking good. 
bring it back to both. And then we will try the right one. And again, we're not going to get too deep into the theory of any of this. This is just the procedure. Um, there are really great resources on the theory behind all this stuff in both real aviation videos and sim aviation. So, But um, we're going to go back to both. I don't want to start again. Back to both. And then we just want to make sure that the gyro suction or our vacuum pressure is 4.8 to 5.1 inches of mercury. So we want it between 4 and 5, probably a little less than 5. Uh, and then we're making sure we have gas, first of all, fuel pressure, oil pressures in the green, oil temperatures are in the green. And that ought to do it. So give it one last look. The last thing, another thing to do before you look at, make sure all your circuit breakers are pushed in. You can push all these out. It's a nice comp complex aircraft. So make sure those are all pushed in. One thing we can do is test the enunciator panel while we're burning all this gas. Make sure that all lights up. And then the last thing we're going to do is exercise our propeller lever. So we're going to bring the props all the way back. Make sure our engine doesn't die. Make sure it does everything we expect it to do. We're down to some RPM value that's lower. And then bring it back forward. So we're just putting the engine through its paces real quick. And we'll bring the throttle back. All right, we're ready for departure. All right, so we've got everything lined up. We're holding short of 3.5 right. We're going to go ahead and make our radio call to Centennial Traffic. Centennial Traffic, arrow 616 Victor Foxtrot, taking 3.5 right for a departure out to the west, Centennial Traffic. So we'll taxi out onto the runway. Now, for takeoff, we want to set flaps 10. We want to make sure that our battery is on, that our alternators are on. We want fuel pump going to low. Make sure our fuel is as selected to a fuel tank, and ideally on the, the fuller tank. We've done all our engine checks. We want to make sure that alternate air, this lever here, is closed. Mixture is set full forward. Props are set full forward. Flaps are flaps 10. And trim is neutral, so that'll be okay for now. Controls are free and our doors are closed. Okay. So now we are going to bring up full, bring up power gradually. Now we're going to set full power about 41 inches of manifold pressure. Really easy mistake to do. If you blow it out, you have this overboost that the turbo arrow can do. Really, full power without that is only 75% of what the engine can do. So you're not going to take the throttles all the way forward. We're going to accelerate, and between 70 and 77 knots, we're going to think about rotating. So 77 knots, a little bit of left rudder. We do have a bit of a crosswind. But away we go. You can come up. Flaps can come up. And then we'll just trim it on back. Now I use a little wheel on my joystick for trim, but however you trim. We'll just trim it back so we put ourselves in a nice climb. Now short field procedures, you can go a second notch of flaps, 25 degrees, and then rotate around 53 to 64 knots, depending on how heavy you are. Now our best rate of climb with gear up and flaps up, 97 knots. And our best angle is going to be 79 knots. So we'll shoot for 100-ish, right? Some of these numbers aren't going to be as that precise. We're gonna climb out to 7,000 feet and now make a left-hand turn. So we're gonna turn 270. And we can go ahead and just let everyone know what we're doing. Centennial Traffic, arrow 616 Victor Foxtrot is departing out to the west at 7,000 feet, Centennial. 
So I'll just keep the turn in till we go to the west and just try and maintain our altitude of 7,000 feet. So we're going to fly out this way a little bit where the, the uh, ATC ceiling is a little, or, or the class Bravo starts a little bit higher. So we have airspace above us that we need clearance into, but right now we're just fully VFR. So we're just going to level at 7,000 feet and set a good, a decent cruise power. We're going to come off the prop RPM. We'll bring that back to around 2,400 and just bring off the mixture a little bit. Now, if you're looking for your EGT, it's down there on the right-hand side, so you can watch that as you adjust your mixture. We're just going to trim out for level flight. Now, it is windy, and this plane does require a good bit of trimming for um, good flight, so keep that in mind as you're doing it. The other thing, just to demonstrate, if we go further power, we get that yellow light. That's overboost. We don't want that on takeoff. We want to set the max power without overboost. That just gives us some extra to work with. So we're cruising. I'll go ahead and set like 30 inches of manifold pressure. And we'll go from there. All right, so we're now flying west. We can even bring the power back just a smidge more. 25 is fine. We're not very heavy. Um, well, we're about mid-heavy. I have full tanks and two passengers at the moment. So we'll hold 7,000 feet and um, get ready to start climbing into 8,000 feet here. You can see the front range of the Rocky Mountains out in front of us. That's the very beginning of that. And Denver, the city itself, downtown is off to our right. So there's a couple of VFR corridors that go north um, along different visual references that way. Um, underneath the Bravo shelf. So, we're going to go ahead and bring the power up a bit. 35 inches of manifold pressure and just trim out a little bit so we can climb. And again, there's a lot more optimizing you can do with power settings, but for now, we're just doing very basics, knocking off the rust. So that's 8,500. We'll keep it going. And keep an eye on our speed. We're about 110, 105 knots. All right, so that is 8,000 feet there. We'll just level off, let the stick come forward, let the nose come forward, and then trim so we don't lose that altitude. All right, so next up we're going to turn. So VATSIM VFR is pretty simple. What we need to know is if a controller tells me to fly a certain heading, I can do that at a certain altitude. And so we're at 7,000 feet. We're going to try and stay at 7,000 feet. And we're going to turn left, heading 180. Now, the trick in turning, if you want to be good, it's not complicated, but we do want to try and maintain our altitude. So we don't want to jump all over the place. If you could stay at 8,000 feet in turning, it's just cleaner. And then we'll just try and roll out neatly on 180, and I'm going to miss it just a smidge. But um, that's it. And then you're gonna, probably going to have to retrim and re-level off. The uh, arrow does take a lot of trim. All of the variants do. So that will be something I recommend having bound somewhere as trim. So that's south 180. Um, let's go ahead and turn, keep turning left. So. Let's make up a scenario, maybe ATC, or someone says turn left heading 120. We can go ahead and do that. And again, the trick is just maintaining altitude. So we may have to bring the nose up a little bit. But again, just kind of use those two things as your markers. Can you roll out onto the right heading and stay at the altitude you want to be at? VFR flying is kind of subtle like that. Those are really your success criteria. All right. So we're leveled off. We can put it into a good cruising um, cruising speed. We'll put 20, 25 inches of manifold pressure. We're still at about 2,400 RPM. That'll do just fine. 
So the last thing we want to really mess with right now, and we can turn our aux fuel off if I think of it, um, we want to make sure that we know how to use the autopilot basic functionality. So that'll be heading hold. Um, there is an altitude hold cheat mode that you can use, and we'll, we'll look at that. But um, for now, let's just try and hold a heading of 120. So we're going to use this knob here on our HSI. And heading mode is on. It's in heading here, so we just hit autopilot on. Now, it's not going to maintain altitude for us, so we still have to do that. But it should now stay on a heading of 120. Now, say we want to turn right, heading 150. Move the knob over to the right. And it's not the snappiest thing, but it does definitely work. Now, if you do want to activate your autopilot hold, your auto, your altitude hold, you click the Piper logo here. That will hold your altitude. It's gone right through it because I hit the wrong button. So we'll turn autopilot off, take control again, and just level back off. The other thing that you should think about in the arrow is um, fuel selection. Now, there is an option to turn on auto fuel selection. Uh, that will automatically change the tanks, uh, but we're not using that. So if we were on a cross country, we would want to know how to change our fuel. So how do we do that? Pretty simple. We want to turn the fuel pump on and turn this lever to the right hand tank. We'll let that run a little bit, make sure we still have fuel. And as long as we do, we can turn that back off. Now, fuel pumps, I haven't found a great source. The manual is a little vague. It sounds like they want it on all the time. Um, but often in Pipers, you will do use your fuel pumps on takeoff, landing, and when you're switching fuel tanks. That's not specific to turbos or anything, but um, that is just kind of a general rule of thumb. It's different for every airplane, though. All right, so... That's pretty good. We are still at 8,000 feet. We're still in the air. So let's go ahead and make a left-hand turn 060 and try and find our home airport. Again, I'm trying to just talk through the maneuvers that I'm doing, so if you wanted to test yourself, you could follow along. And again, we're just trying to, now that I'm talking and doing this, we're still trying to make sure that we maintain our altitude and roll out on 060. It's not rocket science, but it is, um, it's focusing on the little things in these small airplanes that make them pretty fun to fly sometimes. And if I were a betting man and my geography and geometry are okay, APA should be somewhere off to our left front. Now I am using the 530. You can use any of the GPS options. Uh, GTN 750 on 100 dual, but we're using the 530, so we'll back this off, and we can cheat and look at it, too. And there's APA, you see, right just about off our nose. And again, we're coming in for a... Um, we'll come in for runway 35 left. So at this point, we can go ahead and start descending to 7,000 feet. So we'll come back on the power a little bit. Now in descent, the important thing with the arrow is we don't want to pull the power all the way back. It'll yell at you, it'll think your gear needs to be out, and it's bad for the engine. So essentially, we just want to basically set anything above 15. If you have to pull it back, we want to limit that. So you just reset power every so often if you really need to descend quickly. Um, but yeah, we'll bring it back to about 15 inches of manifold pressure. 14 inches is what they um, say will cause engine fouling. And then again, 060, so APA is going to be off to our left a little bit. I'll actually maintain a little altitude over these hills because they're getting a little close. So at this point, try and look for the airport, pick it out, use your GPS, do whatever you have to do to figure out where the airport is. And we'll go ahead and turn on back towards it now. Looks like it's to our north. And we'll shoot to be at about 7,000 feet as we're starting to enter the pattern. Alright, so the eagle-eyed among you may see the, the airport out in front of us. They have the flashing lights. We're actually basically coming in the right direction to go into straight into the runway. 
we're going to enter on a right base for the runway instead. Now, landing, basically, nothing too fancy. We're going to turn our fuel pumps on to low. We are going to set our fuel selector to the fullest tank. That'll be the right tank right now. Um, fuel pump is on mixture. will be set. We'll put that full forward, props full forward. Gear can come down at 133 knots. So we're good now at about 115. And we'll add just a little power to counteract that. Now, flaps, we can set flaps um, at about 108 knots. So that'll be our first notch. We have three notches, so at below, I think it's 88 knots. We can go full flaps. And then we can make our radio call too. So we're at 7,500 feet, which is good to know. Centennial traffic, arrow 616 Victor Foxtrot. We're gonna enter a right base for to land, runway 35 right, full stop, centennial traffic. All right, so we'll descend down to 7,000 feet. And so we've got three green on the gear. That is out. And we'll just let our speed hang around here is pretty good. It's going to be bumpy coming in. It may not be the best landing ever. And that's all right. So we'll give it the first notch of flaps, too, as we turn base. And the nice thing about setting our HSI so that it um, is on the runway heading is we still have the runway heading in. Now, if you do need some light on your instrument gauges, you can turn up that knob there. Not that it does that much, but it does help a little bit. So again, we're just going to manage speed The airport is about at 5,500 feet. So we are looking all right for now. But it is very windy today. Keeping an eye out. And then we'll start a right hand turn to get onto the runway. Again, right now I've got not very much power in at all, between 20 and 25 inches of uh, manifold pressure, and it'll go to a little bit less once. Well, it may it'll depend on what the uh, what the airplane wants to do, but you don't need a whole heck of a lot of power here in the turbo arrow. So we will turn out here. We've got one red, three white, which means we're a bit high. So I'll come back in the power, get our speed down so we can start bringing in the rest of our flaps. So we're now full flaps, and we can make our radio call. Centennial traffic, arrow six, Victor Foxtrot, short final to land three, five, right, full stop, Centennial. And we'll give a little bit of power now. We've got full flaps, we're very draggy. Wind is blowing us all around. But as a general rule of thumb, I'm shooting for 80 knots or so here on final. Whew. So let it keep coming down. This is looking pretty good. And you'll find it's bumpy on coming in. It feels very dynamic. That's one of the things with the arrow that I think you notice. Uh, more so than other maybe default airplanes. It feels very dynamic, even in relatively light wind situations. So it may feel bumpy, but just keep it pointed at the runway. Keep focused, and um, you'll be all right. And we're going to aim for the touchdown point. Over the threshold. We're still bouncing around a bit. But it's not horrible. And about here we can go bring the power out. Just flare a bit. I'm just trying to stop it from landing. 
little bounce and a little float, but we're a little plane on a big runway, so that's all right. We've made it down. We'll bring flaps up. And we'll turn off at the next taxiway right here, which should be Alpha 13. Centennial traffic, arrow six Victor Foxtrot, vacated runway three five right at Alpha 15. We're in taxi to parking via Alpha. Centennial traffic. And no messing with lights or anything really. We'll keep everything pretty much full forward. You can lean out the mixture on taxi if you want to. But it's fake fuel and we're not paying for it. So that's a pretty typical flight in the aero. We're going to taxi on back. We'll shut everything down to a point where you should be able to pick it back up if you were to load back in in your state-saved aircraft. Um, but yeah, it's not a complex airplane, but it is a complex model. It's a good simulation of it. Feels very good to fly. And um, yeah, this just helps me dust off the rust. Where is each gauge? What are they all called? And um, what options do I have? What are my performance limits? Honestly, if you're doing it, if you're struggling to learn an airplane or you want to relearn an airplane, it just helps to talk through it sometimes and say, okay, well, I'm going to, this is what I'm going to do in this phase of flight and not in this one. So pretty quick, fun flight. If you want to follow along, I'll make up a little PDF um, with everything that we did today. So you can follow along as part of your Aero VFR check ride. And hopefully this helps. Hopefully this is at least a little bit useful to someone. All right, so we are here back at um, parking. I did notice pedo heat. It should be on, uh, especially on a cold day. It's fairly cold, not super cloudy, so not a huge deal, but pedo heat should go on before you take off. Now, we can turn all that off. We can turn our landing lights off. Our anti-collision lights will stay on for now, and uh, we'll just shut down the engine. And one of the best ways to stop an engine from running is to take away its fuel. So we'll bring the mixture back to idle cutoff. We'll bring the pop lever back turn off our alternators and take the magnetos back to off. You can also turn the fuel pump to off. Um, avionics can come off, which is just that knob here, here, and it, it'll depend on what your specific configuration is. Um, magnetos off, alternator off, mixtures and idle caught off. All these levers are out. Our electrical switches are off, and um, that's about it. So we can get out our chocks and tie downs and open the cabin door. So that is it for our check ride for the Just Flight Turbo Aero 4 and 3. All the same stuff for the 4 will apply for the 3. Um, and Aero broadly, but um, it is a little bit different for the turbos. We may do a regular Aero one here in the future if this is at all helpful to people. But yeah, this just, just kind of shows my thought process when I'm relearning an airplane and getting familiarized with an airplane in one flight. I'm not an aero expert. I'm not a real pilot. So take all this with a grain of salt. And if you have any additions or other things or things you want to point out, drop in the comment section below, as always. So good fun flight, good quick flight to get us up and running in the aero. This has been VFR. As always, take it easy, everybody.